Hello, everybody. <clears throat> so welcome to the Happy Hour pregame show. I wasn't, um, I was not necessarily going to start this until like around five o'clock, but it's actually 444, 444 right this second. I was sitting here prepared, just kind of like waiting for things. I was just like, you know what? Let me go on a little early. Hey, Nilea. Um, let me just go on a little bit early. I'm here now. And let's just do this. Um, but I'm really, today's been a really interesting day. And I guess we're still feeling these post full moon energies. That's kind of what's coming through right now. Hi, everybody. So um, I wanted to, all day, I've been kind of feeling a very strange energy, um, a very restless one. And it definitely feels like it's an energy within the Divine Feminine Collective. If you checked out my story, earlier today I mentioned that I was going to come uh, I was going to come live and I was going to talk to you guys and I mentioned that it was most likely going to be a talk with the feminine um, and that's really what I want to talk about right now okay I really want to speak to the feminine collective about what's going on for us because like Nilea like you said there is this like restlessness um, or, or uh, uh, I think you said it was um, anxiety. You, you were saying it's an anxious, it's an anxious energy within the collective. For me personally, I'm perceiving it as, um, at, um, I'm perceiving it as, hey Leanne, I'm perceiving it as, a, as a restlessness, even an agitation. And I even have a number of notes here that I wrote down that I want to talk to you guys about. I just want to go through it. I want to speak to you guys about it on how, how I've been kind of perceiving it. Um, and, and then we're, I'm going to, I'm going to pull some energies here and I'm just going to get some guidance for you, for us in terms of this situation. Um, but some of the things I have written down so far, um, so some of the keywords that are part of this, and this is very much, this has a lot to do with the twin flame situation. Yeah. Twin flames, divine counterparts, however you want to describe it. Um, it really doesn't even matter. But some of the key words that I picked up on, aggravation, agitation, restless, restlessness. Um, and I have questions like, is this a new level of detachment? Um, and, and, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, get, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. You guys, please know that, um, you know, this is, this live session is going to be up on YouTube later um, tomorrow, uh, most likely. And, um, there, there, I'm going to be mentioning a few videos that I really think that you guys should check out because it's talking a lot about what's going on here. And it's interesting because the energy that we're in right now is definitely a continuation of something that has been going on for some time, uh, especially on the feminine, on the feminine side. So look, check it out for any of you that are the masculine out there that are tuning in. Uh, whether you're here during the live stream or you're watching this later on YouTube, this really isn't a conversation for you. However, you're encouraged to watch and continue listening because this is going to help you get insight as to what's going on with the feminine collective and maybe even what's going on with your own inner feminine energies. Because I know um, on the feminine side that has, you know, we all have masculine and feminine energy, but I do feel like a lot of what's going on is on is coming through from the masculine side. And because we're all connected and we have these masculine and feminine energies within, we're feeling everything that's going on with each other. But I really want to talk to the feminines about this, okay? Because the masculines are going through a whole other situation. And we could talk about that later. But you guys, masculines, if you're here, you're encouraged to, to, to listen and understand. Um, but feminines, so this really kind of all kicked off. This was a whole wave that kicked off, I want to say about a month ago or so now. Um, and it's something that I started channeling in morning coffee. And then some, one of the viewers mentioned that Sylvia from Enchanted World of Twin Flames mentioned that she was channeling something very similar. And that got me to check her out again. Hey, Steph, that got me to check her out again because I had been watching her for some time. I watched her in the very beginning when I was in the beginning of my own Twin Flame journey. And um, then I stopped watching her for a while because, <clears throat> excuse me, because I was trying to get away. <laughs> Literally, I was trying to escape the twin flame situation. So I stopped watching a lot of different people. And um, 
So, but then once I got back into this energy or I was talking about this and someone shared her channel again, I looked up, I looked her up and I listened to her message and she was really describing what I was also experiencing and what I was picking up on, what I was picking up on. But ultimately I was experiencing it a little bit different, but, and, and I'm going to link all of that because there's actually a new video that I want you guys to check out. That's, that's going a little more in depth, but I would highly recommend that you check out her channel if you're resonating with this, because she's, she's speaking of it from a different perspective from a different point of view, still from the feminine side, but from still from, from like a different, a little bit of a different point of view. But there has been almost like a disconnect within the feminine collective, or I guess within like the whole twin flame collective, but being the one the, and the, on the feminine side here and being the one that really feels most of this from the get go. I'm, well, it's not, we all feel it, both the masculine and the feminine feel it. It's just the feminine that uh, is uh, maybe con more consciously aware of it more or you know accepts it more because the masculine kind of is just like what the fuck is this i don't know who you are get out of my space you scare me you you freak me out blah 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 whatnot whatever but that's at least just in the beginning of the situation but there's like one of the main points i have written down here is there's there's a new level of detachment that i feel is happening uh, on behalf of the divine feminine collective and when it comes to that there you know we have these these other keywords that i've come up with aggravation, agitation, restlessness. And then I have a question that comes from that. It's like, has the feminine found complacency in separation? Like, have we been in separation for so long and become so comfortable with being in this energy that it's like, there's a level of, of complacency almost. It's like, have we been in this separation phase for so long that, you know, um, that it's like, well, whatever. There's a feeling of apathy here and almost not wanting a partner, which is weird because it's the exact opposite of what we were feeling before. And there are even people in the collective that are talking about um, not loving their masculine, not loving their twin. And, and that was actually kind of something that I that I felt. However, I wasn't necessarily um, going to allow myself to sink into that and to fall into that because of how intense everything was um, in the past, how intense the feelings were. And, I, and it was one of those situations where it's like, I can't just, you can't just fall out of love with someone like that, you know? <laughs> you, I mean, it, 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 and when I was even talking about that, and I'll link that, I'll put that up there in too, that, um, that, that conversation moment that I had where I was kind of talking about that. Um, and it, it, I, I have it on YouTube right now as Twin Flame Storytime, but... There's like, you can't have such an intense connection with someone, um, especially from my point of view, having constant reminders, constant synchronicities, having other people that I've interacted with that, you know, were maybe a similar feeling, a romantic feeling, but it was nothing like this one individual. And then all of a sudden, boop, it's just gone. Like it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? So there are people saying that, you know, they've, they, they don't love this person anymore or, but, but. I feel like, and what I've channeled in the past was that we've been in a situation where we're learning to love ourselves differently. We're also learning to love the masculine, the divine masculine differently. And this is what, is, this is what takes me to another video that I really want you guys to check out. There's someone on YouTube that goes by the name of the divine masculine. And he is someone that I've been watching ever since I started my twin flame journey. And he's actually one of the people that I did not disconnect from when I was trying to, you know, separate myself from the whole situation. And one of the main reasons why I started watching him was because he was speaking about the journey from the masculine perspective. And I felt that to be really, really valuable because there are so many of us on, on here, on social media, on YouTube, on Instagram that are on the feminine side. And what we really need to help us with this perspective is we need the perspective from the masculine. So he's someone that I've been, I've been watching and he put out a message yesterday. Was it yesterday? No, Monday. He put it out Monday. Um, and it was basically, uh, the title of it was congratulations to the feminine. And actually, actually I did share this video already. I put it on my, in the community tab. Um, I made a post about it on the, com in the community tab. 
Aha, wait, hold on, Nilea. I just saw your comment there. The feminines are called to break through their ego more rather than be complacent or let their ego convince them it's not love. That is an excellent point. And I actually want to write that down because I have something in relation to that, Nilea, um, that we're, I'm going to get to in a second. But so in this, but in this message, now I did, I, I've already posted that in the, um, in the community tabs of my YouTube channel, but I'm going to repost it once this is up. Um, but he speaks about how the feminine is learning or, or is coming to a place where it's just like, she's learning that the masculine doesn't have to change in order to be in union with him or her. It doesn't matter. We're talking energy, not gender. And that was very important because that's also something that I have been channeling here as well. I was saying it a little bit differently, but then in terms of that, that's a re that is a way that we are learning to learn to love the masculine in a different way. That we're learning to love our twin in the different in a different way. And something I was saying very specifically was that we have to both the masculine and the feminine need to learn how to meet each other in the middle. The masculine is the master of the physical domain of the 3D world. The feminine is the master of the, the 5D or the spiritual world. We're not really meant to be on an, like literally be the same person just in two different bodies. We are meant to be individuals, but we have to find a way to harmonize with each other, to come together, to meet each other halfway. And so part of that does, back to Nilea's point that she mentioned here, part of that has to do with a massive ego death. And that's also, or, or uh, uh, ego realignment, I guess you could call it. And that's where a lot of these feelings of aggravation, agitation, restlessness, complacency, apathy, um, that's where all of these feelings are coming from. And I was, and, and it's interesting because I've really been in that energy all day. I've been in that energy of just like feeling, feeling like, you know, I don't care what happens. I don't care who my partner. Oh, okay. Wait. So let me, let me go back a little bit more because this is taking me back to what Sylvia was talking about when she was talking about how, you know, the feminine is really, is really detaching here. And it's come to a place where collectively the feminine is like, look, I don't care if I'm with my twin or my, my official divine masculine or not. All I care about is being in a happy and loving relationship, being with someone that harmonizes with me, that aligns with what I want or need in a relationship, that harmonizes with my life and my mission, that someone that I can that can be my partner in crime and we can do the damn thing and get this shit done and then get the F up out of here. You know what I mean? It's a it's a it is a whole other level of detachment. Um that is very, don't get me wrong, is a very healthy place for us to be in. But then it's, it, 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 there's a level here where it's like, we've been in that energy for so long now on a collective scale that it's like, well, fuck, well, shit, when is this shit actually going to pop off? And so then today I was feeling the egoic part of it. I was feeling the apathy. I was feeling the restlessness. I was feeling maybe even a little bit of resentment, but understand that what I was feeling was not towards the masculine. And that is what's a big, big difference here. In the past, there would have been this energy of, I'm, I, I hate you. I can't stand you. Why the hell are you taking so long? Um, I resent you for this, that, and the third. But it's none of that. Now, this time, at this point, at least what I'm feeling, and I guess what I'm picking up for many others on the, on the in the collective, it's not towards the masculine. It's just towards the whole dynamic, the whole situation, the whole process in general. And when I hit that realization, I was like, okay, this is definitely an ego problem. Because otherwise, if this was spirit, if this was, I mean, this wouldn't be coming from spirit because spirit enjoys and understands and recognizes the process. The ego is the one that fights and is like, no, nah, this is taking too long. Rah, rah, rah. This is never going to happen. Screw you. Fuck you. I'm out of here. You, you get what I'm saying? I was just feeling this sense of restlessness and agitation just building all day. And I was kind of, you know, out and about doing things and allowing myself to listen to readings and allowing myself because maybe I was thinking, OK, well, maybe this can kind of like, you know, listening to these readings or whatnot, maybe this can talk me off the ledge a little bit. 
<laughs> okay, the, the tension just kept building. There was nothing I could do to really ease anything. And then the number synchronicity started. And I started, and I saw 222 a number of times throughout the day. And I was like, all right, that's great. But I was in such an egoic point of view that it was like, I don't care what this 222 number has to say. I'm fucking irritated, you know what I mean? So, okay, then fine. I decided that I was going to, um, right before I started this live session, I was going to go down to my local coffee shop, get myself a nice, a nice acai bowl, and I was going to write down some of my thoughts and my feelings and try and get this out and try to get an understanding of this so that we could come and talk about this today. And I, I found myself on Instagram and I saw this post on Instagram that said 2222, right? Because today is February 12th uh, of 2020. Okay, so this is a number, a strong two vibrational day. But it mentioned how, and I wish I, wish I still had this, but um, it basically, it put into perspective why I was seeing this number, why spirit was trying to come through and just be like, yo, just calm down a little bit. Just chill out, everything's going to be okay. We are being aligned with our partners. Whether it's going, hi Rose. Oh my God, I love you. Whether it's going to be with your twin flame or whether it's going to be with someone else that actually does align with you. And that's another thing that Shamari, the divine masculine, mentions in his video. We are in a process of really purging out a lot of the past shit having to do with our divine masculines or having to do with our twin flames. Either that's going to help us bring, help us come together with the divine masculine, with your twin flame, or it's going to set you up to release space so that someone new can come in, okay? So I guess what we can say is this is a little bit of a final purge here. Don't you think? I think so. So, all right, so you guys, so 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 now that I've, I've, I've said all that, I've ranted and raved, I hope that it, that's made sense. Um, um, so with all of that said here, you guys, you guys let me know, you know, what's going on for you. I am going to pull some cards and I'm going to see if we can get some guidance here. So I'm starting with the Sacred Destiny Oracle. Now, this is uh, this is a deck that one of my um, one of my followers sent me and I'm, I'm so excited about it. I literally just opened it. This feels like this couldn't be a more perfect time to use this deck. I've never even used this before. I'm going off this completely intuitively. I do have, um, okay, I do have the book here, but I'm not going to, unless I'm really pressed to, to read from the book, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to, uh, I, I don't plan on it, but, um, so, okay, so, yeah, I don't really have anything else I want to say right now about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm just going to pull some cards and I'm going to see what messages come out for us here. And for the masculines that are in fact watching this, like I know y'all are pretty incognito. I, you ain't trying to let people know that you're watching, which is fine. But I do want to. Uh, well, first of all, I want to commend you if you are watching because that's a good thing. But also, um, I want you guys to know that you know most of this. I'm, I, I guess I can speak for the for a majority of us here when we say that like the feminine is not really mad at you. The feminine is not trying to rush you. If, if there's any sort of agitation or aggravation, it's really not towards you. It's really just towards the whole situation. And it could even be... Um, Because I'm kind of picking up on an energy of there are some of us out here that are really fucking pissed off with the whole system and the whole way that the world has come to be and all of these obstacles that we have to face just so that we can find love or be with the person that we, we love. It, that it has to be such a challenge for people to, 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 to live in a world that is full of unconditional love. You know what I mean? And that's really what this journey is all about. This twin flame journey is really about bringing unconditional love to the earth, okay? Like it really isn't even about being in a romantic relationship. And yet all of this, we have to jump through hoops and hurdles just to be with someone that we love. Like that's some fucking bullshit, you know? 
So understand that none of this is really, we're not mad at you anymore. I'm really, I mean, I, I speak, I guess I should speak for myself. Although on a collective scale, I really do feel like the feminines have detached enough to be in a position to, to be honest and say, look, I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at the situation. Okay. I'm going to give this one more shuffle. Yes, Nancy, I did watch that reading. Um, Amanda Ellis's reading, uh, her Twin Flame reading, which I believe is titled, it's titled um, Don't Be Afraid. And I'll post that in, I'll, I'll tag that one in the video too. That's a good one. Amanda Ellis is great. Um, I've been following her for a very long time. Okay. Yeah, Elizabeth, that's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. One last shuffle. And then I, I really... I really feel guided to, um, to, to, to gear this message towards the feminines here. Okay. All right. So let's see. All right, spirit. Uh, God source creator spirits of love and light that wish to aid us on this twin flame journey with that wish that genuinely wish to, to help us anchor unconditional love on the planet in this moment. Please, any guidance that you have for the Twin Flames, mainly Divine Feminine, but Divine Masculine also, any, just the best messages for the Twins, for the Collective even. Even those of you that aren't necessarily on the Twin Flame journey, or maybe don't necessarily resonate with the Twin Flame journey, but you do resonate with the goal of embodying and anchoring unconditional love, because you don't have to be a Twin Flame to do that. It's just that the Twin Flames, the Twin Flame Collective is literally charged with leading the way there. So for also for any of you that are resonating with this right now, this idea of um, unconditional love and anchoring that unconditional love, what messages do you have for us? What's going on right now? Can you give us give us a little bit of insight, please, as to what is happening? Ooh. It's taking a minute. Okay. Well, would you look at that? Wow. All right. We have Gateway which is first. And look, it's a unicorn. Ah, I love it. You have gateway and you have leadership. Okay. Underneath the deck right now is focus, is focus. Okay. So there is a, yes. So those, those of us twin flames, divine partners, whatever, whatever, it doesn't matter. But those of us that are here doing this at this moment in time right now, we need to understand that we are in fact in a, 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 um, a leadership role, okay? And we are in fact leading the way and we need to remain focused on that, okay? But we are, we're, we're at a gateway here, all right? So, and this, honestly, what I'm, and this is again, this is something that Shamari or the Divine Masculine mentioned in his video that I have been channeling for some time. And it's the element of um, negative entities that are trying to get in and stop us from manifesting this union. Um, and that's something that I, I, I spoke of in that first Twin Flame story time that is tagged here. Um, uh, because I went through that phase where I realized that I had slipped into a Queen of Swords energy. Many of you have already seen this, but I slipped into a Queen of Swords energy and but then recognized towards the end of it that there were negative entities like it was a psychic attack and there were negative entities that were just egging me on trying to keep me in that negative space. In order to siphon that energy from me, number one, because they feed off of that negative energy, but also number two, to help put some sort of, to help me personally create a blockage in between the connection between me and my divine masculine, which would only help to keep us from coming together. And Shamari or the divine masculine, he mentioned this in the video here. All right. We are at a gateway. We are at a turning point is even what spirit is saying here, okay? And what we really need to do is focus, focus on the main goal. Focus on our role as a leader here in terms of anchoring unconditional love and showing people what unconditional love truly is. And my understanding of unconditional love has completely changed my perspective in terms of being on the feminine side of the equation. Because in the past, there was this narrative of 
You know, the masculine needs to get with the program and he needs to raise his vibration and he needs to come up to my level and this, that, and the third and blah, blah, blah. And he needs to forsake his, his, his three-dimensional ties and his focus on the 3D, like the physical ain't even all that's real, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. But then I went through a process of understanding and integrating my own masculine energy and understanding from my own point of view what masculine energy stood for and what masculine energy is really rooted and grounded within. And that's within the three-dimensional world. We live here, we are in these physical, and we are in these meat suits in the three-dimensional world. It makes it, it is absolutely ridiculous to even think about the fact that you need to forsake the 3D world in order to have your spiritual experience. That is absolute and utter bullshit, you guys. We are in the three-dimensional world. You can't forsake it. You didn't come down here to forsake the three-dimensional world. You came down here to live in it and experience it. Of course, from the masculine or the feminine point of view, you're going to have different points of view, but that does not make either side of the equation any less valid than the other. And this is something that I was saying to some of my friends not too long ago. You cannot have one without the other because they were talking about how, oh, boys are stupid and this, that, and the third. And we don't even, what do we really even need men for? It's like, whoa, you stop right there. You cannot have one without the other. Masculine and feminine are two parts of the same whole. We need to find a way to balance and integrate. So then on top of that, and this is all in terms of this focus that we need to under keep in mind, okay? On top of that, what unconditional love has helped me understand is as you in you, you we are individuals, sure, but we have all come down here for a reason to do this at the same time. We are all here to do this together. We are not meant to do this all on our own, which means we need our counterparts to help balance things out. But if you want to balance with your counterpart, you need to see them for who they are, recognize them for where they are in their lives, and integrate that, accept that, balance that, align with that, harmonize with that. But you can't do that if you're not in a place of unconditional love because not because being outside of unconditional love and trying to bring that harmony or that alignment or that balance together is not going to work. You're going to clash with each other. You're going to find ways to be mad at each other. You're going to find ways to nitpick at each other. But if you're in unconditional love, you recognize the masculine for his mastery of the 3D world. The masculine recognizes the feminine for her mastery of the spiritual world. And then you two can come together and combine forces and be, an, uh, and be like a power couple, a super team. But you can't get there unless you're in unconditional love and stepping in and, and being able to be in that unconditionally loving space and stepping into that realization means that you have to be honest with yourself. You have to be brutally honest with yourself about your own shortcomings, discrepancies, your own issues with the opposite side. And if it weren't for my process of balancing and integrating my own masculine energy, I wouldn't understand any of that. I would still be looking at my twin or other masculine individuals out there being like, oh my God, you are just so obsessed with the three-dimensional world. Can you please just get like at least a little bit of a spiritual mindset? Like, come on. Like, come the fuck on, guys. Okay? Like, that's not, none of that is even necessary. But you're not going to get there if you're not focused on understanding what unconditional love truly means and how that is going to resonate for you. Okay. Wow, this is such a rant. Such a rant. What I want to do now is I want to look a little bit more at this gateway card. I want to see um, what other messages are coming through. Well, you, actually, you know what? Before I do that, let me read this from the book. Again, I am I have never used this deck before. Um, so just bear with me. Thankfully, okay, good. It's all in alphabetical order. But I want to read this gateway card and then I want to see a little bit more of the message that could come from this, and then um, I'm going to pull some tarot. But this says 
There are places on the planet where the veil between the physical realms and the mystical dimensions is especially thin. These places are called portals, vortexes, and spiritual gateways. In mythology, they are, they are revered as places where things beyond ordinary reality can occur. Mystics, visionaries, and shamans can traverse these, this realm in, and the next through these places. So what this card wants us to know, magic is afoot. Wondrous events are unfolding. Profound revelations and inner illuminations are close at hand. It is, much, it is now much easier to manifest your dreams. This is an excellent time to take action on your, on your visions for the future. A small amount of action now will generate much bigger results. Gateways to spirit are opening and there are places where this veil is especially thin. Fairies and elves are supporting you. Wonders are blossoming in your life. Watch for them. Open your heart to, hall to hallowed, holy, magical energy. The more you become aware of the small marvels in your life, the more they will grow in magnitude. Okay, so excellent, excellent, excellent. Um... So yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. And I just love, oh shoot. I just love the fact that this card has a unicorn on it. Like, are you kidding me? That's, that's fucking beautiful. All right, so I wanna get a little bit more here. Just from this Oracle deck, what else can you tell us? Or what else, ah, what else do we need to know about this gateway energy right now? All right. I just, I find it interesting that, um, Wow. Oh, shit. I just find it interesting that when you really start talking about what true unconditional love is and how to embody that, people really start falling off the path. And it's like, no, guys, this is not just about being in a, re a romantic relationship. This is about showing what unconditional love is. And that goes against the whole three-dimensional paradigm that we've been trained into believing when it comes to relationships. Now, this does not mean that you're allowing narcissists or va energy vampires or abusive people to take advantage of you. No, you still have your boundaries, but that doesn't mean you can't love these people or hold love for them or respect them for the beings that they are, the beings that are made up of the same stardust and light that you are, doesn't mean that you can't hold this kind of love or respect for them. But that also doesn't mean that you're going to let them run rampant in your life. And that goes for your twin. That goes for your divine masculine. That goes for your divine feminine too. Regardless of unconditional love says, regardless of what happens, where we go, what we do, what happens between, whatever, I still love you. And I will still love you. And if you can't sit there and look at yourself in the mirror and say, no matter what happens in my life, I'm still going to love myself or I'm still going to love my twin, then you're not in an energy of unconditional love, period. And that's not to say that you're a bad person for it. Absolutely not. It just means that you're not quite there yet. You still got a little ways to go. And I highly recommend that you practice on that with yourself first. Then you'll be able to look at someone else external to you and be like, I love you anyway. And I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm still kind of dealing with a little bit of that myself because there is this one person from the past, um, from the recent past, especially from the past in which I was crossing paths with my twin all the time. Um, and I still look at him. It's like, look, I forgive you and I can respect you as a human being, but damn, I do not trust you. I do not trust you. And to be quite honest with you, I'm gonna, I would still, try my best to stay as far away from that person as possible. Not because I don't love them, not because I don't respect them, but because I don't trust their energy. But that doesn't mean I can't hold love and respect for them. Understand? Okay. So, and, 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 and see, here's the other thing about the whole unconditionally loving aspect. Holding unconditional love for your twin, whether it's your divine masculine or your divine feminine, is holding an energy of even if that person ends up getting in a relationship with someone else or ends up or has been in a relationship with someone else. It doesn't mean that you can't still love them. And ultimately, any other relationship than the relationship with their, their, with their true divine counterpart is a relationship that's preparing them for the relationship, ultimately, the relationship with their true divine counterpart. So if you find yourself being in an energy of being resentful because your twin, your divine masculine, or your divine feminine is with somebody else, 
then you have some inner soul work that you need to be doing to help alleviate that. Okay. All right. So I'm clarifying. Wow. Wowie, wow, wow. Okay. So I'm clarifying this gateway card. And what we have is courage, adventures, okay, and underneath the deck we have going forward. All right. So yes, this is definitely a message for the divine feminine. And it's mainly a message for the divine feminine because the divine feminine is leading the way when it comes to the spirituality of, or the spiritual nature of this journey. Okay. So feminine, you have to have the courage to step forward this through this gateway and go on this adventure. And the thing that I'm getting specifically from this adventure card is saying, we don't know, we have no idea how this is gonna end up, at least from a conscious three-dimensional point of view. From the point of view of, we're consciously making the effort to walk through this gateway, to continue on this journey, even though we have no idea what's gonna happen, okay? On a spiritual level, sure, we our, our higher selves knows all, it's, knows all that's coming, knows all that is, and is not really is not worried about it. But from an egoic point of view, it's like we're sitting down here like, I don't know what the fuck is about to happen, but you know what? I'm going to go on this damn adventure. All right. I'm going to step through this gateway. I'm going to move forward. And the thing about it is moving forward needs to happen whether you're going, whether you're with your twin or not. Like regardless of the fact, and this is the same for you, divine masculine, but the, the, the feminine is kind of leading the way here. But regardless as to whether your twin is in your life or not, or even you have the idea or the prospect that they're going to end up in your life or not, you still need to own your leadership role and step forward on through this gateway onto this adventure with courage and belief in the self is also what I heard. Okay. Wow. This is intense. And you see, Hey, Julian. So you see, oh, hey, Sam. Oh, my God. Julian. Oh, my goodness. You know what? Actually, I have like about 30 minutes left. And um, and then I have to move over to I have to move over to YouTube because I'm doing happy hour soon. But um, Julian, it would be great if we could have a discussion here about this, because, of course, we're talking twin flame shit. Um, and if you guys don't know about Julian, he is a Vedic astrologer. I think he's fantastic. Um, he's really great. But we should we should definitely have a chat. I would love to have like a joint live session with you here. If you don't mind, we can set that up at some point and we can just talk about all of this. OK, um, but right now I, I just want to I got to continue. Finish what we're doing. Excellent. Excellent. That sounds like a great idea. So. All right. So feminine. And also, yes, I'm speaking mainly to the feminine here right now, but also this is this is definitely for the masculine too, okay? The masculine, you need to hear this. But I want to get some tarot here in terms of gateway adventures and courage moving forward or going forward in leadership, okay? Oh my God, I love that idea. I love that idea, Julian. We're going to do that. We're going to set that up for sure. Okay. All right, one last shuffle. And I just want to see what the tarot has to say for us in terms of this. We have the three of pentacles with, it looks like maybe an ace. Woo! Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. We have strength. We have the queen of wands. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, I think it's the ace of swords. Yes, indeed. It is the ace of swords. Overall energy is the Page of Cups. Aw, oh, Sam, I love you too. All right, overall energy right now is the Page of Cups. Um, and then here what we have is the Ace of Swords, the Queen of Wands, the Three of Pentacles, and Strength. Okay, so the message that I'm getting from the Ace of Swords and the Queen of Wands is, Feminines, we know exactly who we are. And we know exactly what we're doing here. We know exactly what the mission is. And we really need to work on not allowing our egos to get in the way. Okay, you got to keep that sword of truth sharp as a tack. All right, um, we have the three of pentacles and we have strength. But what I came, what I heard when the three of pentacles came out was teamwork. 
There is an element of teamwork here that we are fully doing. We are, in fact, working in tandem with the masculine. We just can't see it in the 3D. Oh. Um, and I, I kind of heard we don't see it for what it is right now. Our egos can't really see past the veil of illusion. And it could be that in this moment right now, the veil of illusion is much stronger than it may have been in the past. Very interesting. Don't forget your fire, Divine Feminine. Don't forget your strength. Stand in your truth. And look, it's, it's, I'm feeling encouraged to say that it's not even about holding your holding space for the divine masculine anymore it's more about just holding your space standing in your truth standing in your authenticity and allowing and that's what the that, that's really what the queen of wands represents allowing the universe to align you with what's right for you so this energy of stressing out as to whether it's your you know this person is your divine masculine or not or you're going to end up with him or her or whatnot whatever it's really that I mean that's an obsolete that that question is obsolete at this point at this point in the journey and and, and please divine masculines out there that are listening to us that are hearing me say this and are, and are starting to freak out don't freak out because again at this point that question of, is this really my twin or is this really my divine masculine or am I actually going to end up with him or her is obsolete because all you really need to do is stay in your divine alignment and you will be aligned with the person that is meant to be with you, period. And I understand that's hard to, that's hard to wrap your head around and your ego kind of wants to fight against that, but that's really all there is to it. That is really, literally all you need to do is stand in your truth, stand in your power, and hold your own. I love you guys too, but hold your own. And I know that's easier said than done, but it's only easier said than done, feminine, is because our egos keep getting in the fucking way. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, my bracelets actually were made by Mama Kane. And you can find a link to her on my Instagram page here. She's fabulous. Um, all right. So I only have a few more minutes left. And apparently these live streams here on Instagram are only an hour long. And so I kind of want to get, I want to get a message for the masculine. Because we've been talking to the feminine for so long. So let's I want to talk to the masculine right now. And I and I actually am loving this sacred destiny oracle right now. Um, so I, I definitely want to close this out by getting a message for the masculine here. So let me sh reshuffle. So for the masculine collective, for the masculine side. All right, one last shuffle, and then masculines. Let's see. Let's see if we can get some some guidance for you here, in terms of dealing with this. And to be quite honest with you, in connecting with your energy, masculines, I literally just want to like swaddle you in like a big old hug, because I can feel I guess I should call it. I can feel your worry. I guess that's really the only all I can. All I really want to describe it as your worry, maybe your free, your fear, maybe your apprehension, but I just, and I want to say some of that, what I'm feeling for you, divine masculine is like, is my twin going to accept me? Is she still going to be available when I, when I finally get to coming around to speaking to her, to opening up to her? Um, I mean, the, honestly, that's really on you, masculine. That's really on you. I mean, she wants you to reach out. She wants you to talk to her. But anyway, let's see what we get for the masculine here. What oracle guidance do we have for the masculine at this moment? And I hope I don't get cut off. But this deck is uh, being... Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, you see? Answered the question right fucking there. Oh, my God. Masculines. Oh my God, masculines. Okay, so 
at the bottom of the deck, overall energy, you do have pleasure. That sure is nice. Because, oh, this is also something I forgot to mention. Um, especially on the feminine side, let me tell you, the sexual energy, girl. <laughs> like, I, can't, I mean, it's becoming, like, at least from my point of view, being on the feminine side here, and I've always been a very sexual, very sensual person, but, like, it's starting to hurt. It's literally starting to get painful, okay? Like, and it's and it's not even an energy of, like, let me just get some real quick just to ease the pain. No, we are in a period, we are at, we're at a space right now where it's like, I'm, not, I, I'm gonna speak for myself here, but I'm in a space right now where it's like, I'm not even trying to have meaningless sex any longer. Not, no, it's just not worth it. It is not worth it at all. So what I see here for you, masculine, in this overall energy with this pleasure coming out here, I mean, bro. But okay, the other two cards that have come out for you are success and happiness. And look at the two dolphins on that happiness card. Dolphins have been a symbol for twin flames. And I even actually, in the in the earlier stages of my own journey, I had a dream about my twin in which... There was like, we were we were at some kind of like beach type area and there were these dolphins swimming through a channel in the sand, okay? So, you're, so okay, so I was feeling like, is this ever going to happen? Uh, is she going to reject me? Is she going to accept me? Blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. The, I mean, the cards answered it right there. Success and happiness. You have this opportunity, all right? So don't, I just heard don't waste it, don't squander it. But also, the other thing that I'm, but also, I mean, this is a journey because the other thing that I'm getting to with, or that I'm picking up here with pleasure is, is this staircase. I mean, it's not, I'm hearing it's a long and arduous process. If you really want the true pleasure that you seek in your life, it's not something that's going to come easy. And that's something for the divine feminine that you need to hear also. Okay. I mean, this is definitely an energy of something that's worth waiting for. Which is why for me personally, being, I guess, in a little bit of a celibate energy is not a bad thing because it's like, no, I would, I've had enough meaningless bullshit experiences with people in the past where I'm good on that. I don't need to experience that any longer. I am willing to wait. And it's not that I'm waiting just for my specific twin. No, uh, no. I'm waiting for the right person. I'm waiting for the person that I can harmonize with, that I can have a romantic relationship, that I can have a partnership with that I can be fully intimate with, not just knocking boots, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and then I'm out of there. Like, no, I don't want that shit any longer, okay? So your success and happiness are coming, masculine. Don't be afraid. There is no reason to be afraid. There is absolutely no reason to be afraid, okay? I wanna get you some tarot here. Let's just see what the tarot has for you. Ooh, shamanic drumming. Okay. To move that sexual energy. But look, and this is even something that Shamari mentioned, the Divine Masculine mentioned in his most recent video that I'm, I'm sharing with you guys. The As far as the feminine goes, the Kundalini energy has been activated. Okay. And actually, a few months ago, there was a major reactivation period where it's just been going and going and going ever since. And that's adding to the feminine's kind of like aggravation and, 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 and frustration because it's like you were feeling this energy. We've been in an energy of the, kund of having this Kundalini activation and feeling that something was coming for the longest time. And yet here we are into February of 2020 and there's still a bunch of shit that hasn't happened yet. You know what I mean? So these be frustrating times, y'all. But okay, masculine, back to you. Back to you here. Last shuffle. And then let's see, let's see what the tarot has for you in terms of happiness, success, and pleasure. And actually, this success card does have a panther on it, and I love panthers. But this panther is giving me an energy of, like, hunting down your prey, being stealthy, very King of Wands-like, um, which is knowing, seeing what you want and knowing you want to go after it, but waiting for the right time to strike, okay? 
Very cool. All right, so so messages for the masculine here. Happiness, success, pleasure is the overall energy. Oh, 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 masculines. This is very good. This is very good. Okay, so you have, and it's not going to feel like it or it's not going to seem like it in the beginning. Oh, no, I have 25 seconds left. Shit. All right, well, masculines, I'm going to have to, I mean, there's going to have to be a part two. Oh, I was so hoping to not have to do a part two. But we're gonna we're having to do a part two here. So I'm quickly going to just get back into the masculine side of this. So just to recap, um, from your oracle cards here, you have happiness and success. And then on the bottom of the deck, overall energy, you do have uh, pleasure. And this was very much in response to what I was feeling, the energies that I was feeling within the masculine collective of fear, a type of fear that's like, is she, and the, the strongest thing, the strongest thing that's coming through from the masculine collective is, is she going to reject me? No. You have happiness and you have success, all right? You also have pleasure. I mean, these things are assured. But look, in the tarot here for you, you have the five of swords, the ten of swords, and the tower. And I'm really getting an energy of completion here. The five of swords and the ten of swords. And this has actually been coming out for the ma in the masculine collective for some time. But the masculine is in an energy of no longer wanting to fight against the feminine. Masculine, you are getting into an energy where you want to harmonize with the feminine. And that is starting to bring up that question for you of, is she going to reject me or not? But it, And the feminine is in an energy of getting into this place where she doesn't want to fight against you either. Okay, she wants to harmonize just as much as you do. But also with this seven of wands energy that's at the bottom of the deck for you, I really feel like you are cardening off or you are putting blockages or barriers up around yourself to keep this energy, this five of swords energy at bay because you are really quite done with it. And as the tower is stating here, I really feel like by you basically cutting people off that only help to generate this five of swords energy, you are in fact going through a tower moment. Or in, in, in this case, I would say creating a tower moment. I want to get a little bit more for you, masculine. Just a little bit more. And then I got to move over to YouTube. There it is right there. You have, oh shit. Okay, masculine. So now you are, your energy is really kind of mirroring the feminine, all right? At the bottom of the deck, you do have the Ace of Swords and the Ace of Swords came out for the feminine. Now you have not come out as the King of Wands, but you did, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, but you did come out as the King of Swords. And then we have, oh my God, more mirroring. And then you have the Page of Cups and the Page of Cups came out for the feminine side too, all right? Um, we have, wow, this is really quite beautiful. We have the Ace of Wands, we have the Four of Wands, we have the Queen of Cups, and we have the Eight of Cups, okay? So there is an energy for you, Divine Masculine. The, 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 guide, the guidance here is the Feminine is sitting in the Queen of Cups energy, okay? She is waiting for you to approach her. She is waiting for you to take your turn to tell her what your feelings are. Tell her the truth. Be open, be honest with her, to open up with her, open up to her, and to leave the past behind with the Eight of Wands. I'm sorry, with the Eight of, huh? no, the Eight of Cups, okay? Ace of Wands to the Four of Wands. So I, I, even though you guys, the masculine, you are much more um, physically or three-dimensionally oriented, the message here is you need to know that you do, in fact, have the spiritual foundation that you need to move forward with this. Um, hi, Jessica, to move forward with this inspiration to approach this Queen of Cups, because the feminine is sitting here in this unconditional love. And she's ready. She's ready to communicate with you. She's ready to get this started. OK. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to feel like you're less than. You don't have to feel like you're not worthy. You don't have to feel like you're not good enough. You Trust me. Trust me, masculine. As a feminine speaking to you right now, and in this Queen of Cups energy, from a place of unconditional love, there is absolutely nothing, and I mean nothing, that you could do 
that would make this person not love you. Of course, she may put up her boundaries, but that does not mean she will ever stop loving you. And that does not mean that you will ever be less than worthy. And you don't have to do anything more than be exactly who you are, exactly who you are meant to be. And that will make you worthy of her. And she's worthy of you too. But she gets that a little more than you do. Because she's sitting in this space of unconditional love. She is the embodiment of unconditional love. Okay? I literally just heard she will love you until the cows come home, go back out, and then come home again. <laughs> you know? All right, guys. For those of you that are really having trouble right now, that would really like some help uh, with your own personal situations, please do not hesitate to hit me up. I am more than uh, willing. Oh, hey, mama. I'm more than willing to do a personal reading for you and have a session with you and all that good stuff. Yeah. I love you guys so very much. Um, and definitely, I hope you have a great night. If I don't see you over on YouTube for happy hour, then I'll see you in the morning for ha for, for morning coffee. And I don't see you for morning coffee, then I'll just see you when you see you. Yeah. I love you guys. Mwah! And I will catch you later. Yeah. Bye.